Welcome everybody to Ugly Thirds, a uh, Loose Threads episode. Um, I'm John, and I, I've got a, a bit of a confession to make. I have made a mistake. A little late night eBaying, I saw with a, a minute or two left on it, a St. Louis Blues jersey, Adidas Authentic for, it was, it was going for like 25 so I, I looked through, looked at the stitching, it all looked perfectly legit and authentic, got it for 30 31 and then I realized, wait a minute, there's no Sullivan on the Blues, nor has there been a Sullivan on the Blues. But it is Adidas Authentic, like it is, is but it's someone's personal custom jersey. 30 bucks in the hole, okay, look, that's not a great loss, I've done worse, but... Shrems has been showing a lot on how to uh, take off jersey numbers and strip them, uh, as, as as we call it. And a 28 has played on the Blues, uh, Mackenzie McEachern, uh, who is a uh, young uh, up-and-comer, hopefully has a big career ahead of him, and has, I have photo-matched him wearing this jersey. So, I'm going to try and pull off seam-ripping around this, stripping the entire jersey, and keeping the numbers intact to simply... Flip them to a 28, buy a nameplate, put it on, and have a pretty legit jersey for an additional 20 bucks for the nameplate. We'll see if I can pull this off. So I'm going to go get the seam ripper, and I'm not going to show you all of all of it because no one wants to watch me work at seams, but we'll see if this project works out. So, in looking at this inside out, it is a factory customization. Uh, so, they put the paper down, stitch through that. Uh, and then this, this looks extremely easy to pull off the nameplate. Uh, and Shrems tells me with the factory customizations, you really don't have to worry about uh, glues uh, and that leaving a bunch of residue behind. And so, I'm going to hope that that's the case here as well. I've gotten started here. I mean, look, it is really simple to simply get in there underneath a couple pieces of thread. And doing this one-handed is not as easy to get the leverage I want. But then you pull it across and snap those threads. And this was sticking a bit, but once I got it moved, it looked like there might be one more piece of thread there. Uh, I don't want to rip this off entirely just yet. And, uh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll have more uh, when there's some significant progress. Right? That's how this works. All right, so while watching hockey tonight, I worked the uh, seam ripper around. Um, let's take a look and try to lift this off. So I think I got all the stitches. And I mean, if, so applying heat the last time I tried it damaged the number and changed the color as the uh, glues shifted. So I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to lie, it's kind of a satisfying pull. There's definitely residue, though. I don't know, did I miss something there? No, I think it's just a little stuck. Really don't want the jersey to rip. You know, there's definitely the, the corners are not as happy with me as the rest of this. But I also don't want to put more damage into the uh, fabric of the jersey. So, something is caught there, but what? Oh, you're not seeing that. Okay, so we're going to get in there just a couple spare threads. And I probably, I mean, like this, this seems like too much of a bank of them to just rip them like I have with some of these other ones already. Yeah, there's a, I have no, uh, 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 there we go. Focus. Yeah, there's a good clump of them there. So I'm glad I got in to rip that out. And again, with trying to preserve both the numbers and the jersey is definitely tougher. There it goes. Same deal, another corner. Uh, 
Uh -huh. Okay. So, there is a residue, not a lot of a residue. That uh, thread going around the outside is not something I've expected. But uh, hopefully a little bit of wash, maybe some steam clean. Obviously, I'm going to pull that out. And having a number back on top of it, I'm hoping it won't be all that noticeable. But yeah, there's, uh, there's one number down. Well, it's clear that the 8 was there. But I did get that out, and all the fluff on the inside came out with it. Uh, but I'm going to keep going, and uh, we're going to deal with this ghosting issue at the end. Uh, or at least, well, before I sew it all back down. But let's get the numbers off, because it's useful to me regardless. So, let's see how that goes. Here's something out, that thread left over at the end. Well, uh, if you pull it out and attack it instead of going piece by piece on the front then when you go over to the other side that thread was holding the entire stitch together and all you have to do is pull and it just comes apart so that does make it easier let's see if we can get this two off. It uh, looked like there were problems in the corners, just like with the last one. And obviously getting it started seems to be the hardest part. If I didn't care about keeping the numbers, I sure would have heated this. And I probably would have come off just a little better. But... I am hoping to use these again. Super easy. So I'll pull out what's left of that thread and uh, eventually we'll flip them and uh, hopefully it doesn't look as bad. Right? Right? All right, one sleeve done. By far the hardest part so far. Some snags I'm not proud of, uh, but at least the numbers are off. So, one step closer. All right, so all the numbers are off successfully, but it's definitely not a factory customization because of all the glue involved. So I'm going to go get a steamer, and uh, we'll see if I can uh, get this cleared. I am leaving the nameplate for now because uh, I think it's going to be a good, um, good for replacing the numbers yet again. Uh, and until I have a replacement for it, it's fine to stay. It should be very easy to pull off and put a new one on. All right, I've washed it once. We're trying to get it so that you can't tell the numbers were here, at least not this intense. Clearly, that hasn't fixed it. And I have to decide if I want to steam it next or uh, wash it again. I don't know that it's going to matter. Uh, most of the residue is gone-ish. It's really, I'm starting to get worried about this outer edge. Am I actually going to be able to get rid of it? Now, again, is it the worst thing in the world when I fix it like such? How much of it are you going to see? But this is certainly, I mean, like, okay, so, you know, we have a corner, we have a line here. Um, how much is it going to matter? Um, but this is certainly something to keep in mind. If you're going to strip a jersey, you better replace it with a number that looks similar or has even more coverage um, than what you otherwise would have. Otherwise, you're probably going to have some leftovers. So, I'm uh, going to keep working on it, but... Um, I think it's time to get out the steamer. So I got a cheap Black & Decker steamer, 15 bucks at Walmart. Look, they make much more expensive one, but I wasn't going to invest a whole lot in this yet because I don't know if it's actually going to do any good. Um, Shrem swears by them. I probably should have asked for more advice, but, uh, well, I was told don't get it too close to the fabric because you can and will melt it, which we definitely don't want. Uh, so I'm going to take this one setting steamer and just kind of get in close and, uh, see if I can make these threads loosen any and therefore give up this line that is so very clear from the eight. And you know, it looks a little better, but I mean, is it just cause it's wet? I, 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 I don't know yet. We'll find out. All right, I really had my doubts. 
However, and it, it, it's not, it's not a magic bullet, that's for sure. Nor is it the blender, the magic bullet. It's a, it's a steamer. That uh, this might actually have some good from it. Not just in the steam, but I noticed when after just kind of trying to work the threads a little, that it does seem to get a little bit better. And I don't know if it's just me and wanting it to look a little better, or again, if it's just because it's now wet, like the damage, like up here I just did it and the, come on, focus. The damage of the thread is still there. Well, that is, oh, you know why? Because there's steam on the lens. That's great, that's great. That um, the damage is still there, but the residue outline is less so. So I'm gonna keep working at this. Honestly, I'm not sure that this is having any good. I had a little bit of hope and uh, it's dissipating as I like just oh, here here is going to be you know visible under the two and uh, I just haven't made a dent I think I'm going to throw it back in the wash and see if it does any more good all right I have blasted this thing with so much steam I'm just not going to do any better this is just damage to the fabric and we're going to cover it as best we can and we'll we'll see what the final product is I got nothing to lose on this so I would get, because I have the subtle outline I feel okay doing just one number at a time and just enough glue that it's going to stay and not move while I'm stitching it in its lovely off-white. And I'm going to line it up exactly with the lines I can still see. Uh, but maybe you can't and there's only going to be a couple places where it's going to be even a little visible from these and uh, hopefully by the end it's not going to matter right okay so let's throw another machine i already tested with a zigzag stitch i have my vintage white thread from who knows what past project and uh let's let's get at least these numbers down As always, the important thing is to ride the edge of it because these uh, the twill will fray unless you have it locked in uh, within that zigzag stitch. That's why it's zigzag stitch to begin with. So, I don't know how it's going to look in the overall, but at least that went well, and that's a number on. Uh, you obviously got to trim the loose threads, but uh, not bad, huh? Not bad at all. All right, the eight is on. Now it's time for part two. Ah. Um, I got some pretty good lines to follow here from where the eight was. And so I'm going to follow those, and then I'm going to add some glue down. Again, just enough, because that 8 did not need much. And well, if I have to move it around at all, I don't want a ton of residue to worry about. I've already dealt with that enough. So, based on the lines that existed, and just eyeballing it, I think it looks pretty good. All right, let's get this two on, same thing. All right. Um, yeah, there's some pinching in here this part and I'm not sure how to deal with it I guess I'm gonna have to take off a lot of stitches a lot of stitches it is what it is should have been more careful
All right, so all of this has been removed and just letting it, the number settle a bit. I think I'm going to be able to stitch it back down and just start from down here and run it around because um, the rest of it looks good. So I don't know how the start is the part that got off. I've certainly had that problem before where the start is wrong and the rest fixed. I, I don't understand it. If you know, let me know in the comments. All right, third time's a charm. Well, part of it's the angle I have to take on this. You know what? No, I'm going to do this the wrong way and say to heck with it. We're just going to get this in. We're going to get it done. It even takes a couple zigzags, a couple different separate stitches. It's fine. I've already screwed up enough. Let us do this confidently. Okay, and then we're going to go back, you know, it, it, I always want to do it in one loop the whole way around, but why? I don't need to. No then says I have to. Well, I am probably going to have to disconnect here. Make sure that's nice and loose. doesn't feel right. Oh no. Now the bobbin's catching? Is that what's happening? No. What is your problem? Oh, please let me be done. I... I don't know what else I can do about it. So I'm going to say it's as done as this is going to get. At some point the fabric's going to give out. Oh, I'm looking at this bottom part here. Um, let's move to the table. All right, so this is it sitting here, and that pucker I can't help but look at, but I think whenever it's hanging, whenever it's all wearing, it's not going to be an issue. I, I really don't think it is, and I don't know that me just undoing that seam and doing it again is going to do any real good. It's awkward. It's an awkward stitch, and it really makes me lament doing these sleeve numbers. Again, darn it, Craig, blow the whistle. Again. I, I, I tried it on and took a picture and it looked like crap. So I'm doing it one more time. 
Well, I tried it on and took a picture, and yes, I got the pucker out of the two, and then realized that the eight is now lower than the two. And I, so I had it lined up. I saw it was lined up, and, I, and this was right before. And in at some point, the rest got thrown off, and I kept going. And now I'm going to have to take off the eight and adjust it because I think that's going to look better. And after working so freaking hard on this too, I'm not redoing it. So I'm going to move up the eight just a little bit. Uh, and I am deeply, deeply frustrated with it. So I went and I stitched and I did it again. And it's better. It's better. It's better. It's not perfect. This is, there's a slight angle to these. It's, it's better. Persistence. Persistence and understanding where everything is flawed. I lined up the eight with the ghosts, and uh, I'm only going to do one at a time because if these shifted enough, God knows what's going to happen to these. And then I'm going to take what happens to that eight and put this two directly in line with it rather than worrying about any ghosting. Um, I know better than to just trust the process. <laughs> much as I love sleeve numbers and I know how important they are as a broadcaster, they are a pain in the neck to do on stitching. So we need to shrink down our width and I think the length will be okay. Well, that was annoying, but I think they came out well. I mean, it's not always a perfect stitch, but all in all, yeah, no, it, that's fine. It's got a nice vintage look to it. Okay, same thing, different sleeve, second verse, same as the first. You can see the outline from the eight there pretty well, but you can see where it should go. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that down with a little glue and under the sewing machine. Okay, same thing one more time. Yeah, that's done. Time to put on another one. All right, so I think this looks good, especially considering some of the horrific things I just got back from Adidas. I think this works. I mean, that 20 on the back isn't perfect, but when you're wearing it, is anyone going to know? And I think some of this is just simply how it how it's laying. Um, got to strip off that nameplate, which means I need to order a new one. And uh, I'll go through that, and uh, then we can finish this. Cause that's that should be the easy part. All right, I left this project go for so long that I frankly don't remember a lot of what I was doing. Uh, we swapped the numbers uh, on the sleeves and the back, and I've been waiting on a nameplate, which I finally got, Mackenzie McEachern. Um, how much more Irish can you get? Uh, so I have to sew this down because it comes heat pressed but not stitched, uh, and then we have to pull this off. And put this on. It's been so long that I actually have a heat press to put this on now. So I will uh, incorporate that into putting this on. Um, wouldn't have been much different without it. It just would have been uh, fabric fusion like I've been using for everything else. Uh, instead of heat pressing it, not a big difference. Um, and honestly, I think I'm going to skip showing some of these parts. Uh, just because of this video has to be getting incredibly long by now. Uh, so you've seen me sew enough. You don't need to see me sewing down a nameplate. Uh, it's literally put, just putting uh, a yellow stitch around the outside. Uh, and then I'll, uh, well, I'm sure I'll have a clip of starting to pick off um, the nameplate. But I also did a separate video on, on how to do that, just that. So there's also that if you want more of it. Uh, so uh, let's get that process started, huh? Let's, uh, we'll skip ahead. All right, so this is done, and boy, was it a bear. I uh, I like a serif font, but every serif, every one of these means you got to zig and over and zag and over. This, this was work. That was serious work. All right, now we have 
the nameplate to take off. And I left it on uh, for matching purposes of just alignment. Um, and you can see that there is a seam right along here. And I just got a standard seam ripper. Uh, and I'm going to work along pulling this out seam by seam. And then we'll see uh, what it means to actually take it off, how much glue is there, which isn't going to matter too much because uh, we're going to be putting this nameplate on top. So it'll cover whatever is underneath, and uh, thankfully it is a slightly longer name than the Sullivan that is here. So it shouldn't be a big deal. Um, yeah, this is not factory customization, so there is definitely glue on this. And uh, I imagine there'll be residue just like with the numbers. Uh, so we'll figure that out. And uh, I'm not going to make you sit through watching all of that. That seems silly, if not cruel. Uh, so I'm going to skip ahead because, again, this is just pick and pick and pick until uh, I have it off. And we'll, we'll come back for that. All right. So uh, I pulled the stitch the whole way around. And um, look, it, it's an easy thing. It's just tedious. Sit in front of the TV, listen, pull, you know, plug away at this. Um, but it is very much still stuck on. And uh, so there is definitely some glue in, in work here. This is not a factory customization. And I did end up peeling it up a little here. So let's just work that a little. And there's and not a lot of glue. Like that's, this, is, this is fairly easy. I could have heated it, I'm sure. It probably made my life a little easier. But we're covering it, so I'm not worried about the shadow that's there. And so my McEachern nameplate will go right over top. And in fact, that ghost will make it very easy to align this. Uh, part of why I didn't bother doing much with it before. Um, so I have my heat press warming up. I'm going to plug, plug it down. And again, you, if you don't have the heat press, which after seeing mine, why would you not shell out the $100? bucks? Um, Really, it is worth it, uh, but I digress. That um, you fabric fusion, you know, underneath, get it on there. It, it doesn't make a huge difference on something as simple as a nameplate, uh, but every time I can use my heat press, I'm going to. Why wouldn't I? So um, we're almost done. It's almost done. Okay, so I have a Teflon pillow, and I've gone back and forth on it. Is it necessary? But I did... Uh, do a little bit of damage to my uh, Reebok Wild jersey. And so I'm going to use it just to try and get it above. I don't think it's so much that I'll protect the other side as it is to keep stuff that maybe doesn't want extra uh, proximity to the, to the heat um, from getting it. Now, this is too wide for the press itself. <coughs> And so I am going to have to do this twice, once on each half, and uh, I'm going to get it aligned basically with the old one, because why not use that? Uh, 280, 25 seconds each. Okay. That was very much down. Okay, let me uh, shift this over and adjust just a little. Move my pillow over a little. Uh, and then another 25. All right, that's down. I'm going to let it cool, stitch around the outside, and it's done. All right, last phase should be the easiest. I say that, and then I know I'm going to botch something. So let's get this thing done. That's it. Well, that was long and arduous. 
Uh, so much so that I ended up finding a Reebok version, uh, you know, with Tarasenko on the back for cheaper than all of those probably should have been. I mean, look, I, I, I spent an extra 20 bucks on this, but honestly, it would have been better if I had just uh, paid better attention and did it right the first time. Do I have an interesting jersey that's very unique? Yeah, um, it came out okay. Uh, there's, you know, th there is little bits of distortion that if you look closely, you might notice that it's not perfect. Thank you, thank you, Heat Press. Um, was was this worth it? No, no, it genuinely wasn't. Um, I don't think I'd go through this much hassle again. And then, and then you know, I say that, but I made the mistake of buying this thing, which Brett Burns never wore. And I'm like, oh, well, maybe I could strip and put 68 on there. Because that was a number one of these. And I'm just like, I really can't learn a lesson, can I? Um, stubborn. Stubborn is my middle name. But it can be done. Uh, I don't recommend taking off the numbers and putting them back on. If I do this, I'm buying a fresh number kit, obviously, uh, and heat pressing it down. And I think that's going to be a whole lot better, um, at least as far as like making it look good when it's on. Not that I think this looks bad, um, but it's 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 just not it's not factory. And there's you know little bits of ghosting, little bits of pulls from me not getting it quite right. Um, but it was cheap and it was done. Um, well, a little bit of a sense of accomplishment, I guess, because I can do it. But uh, should you? No. <laughs> no. No, you shouldn't. Get it right the first time. Much, much better. But can you accomplish it? Yes. And that's what Loose Threads is all about. Doing the ridiculous for little to no benefit. So, uh, for Shrems and Phil, I'm John here on Ugly Thirds Loose Threads. And uh, join me here for more ridiculous uh, projects as time goes on.